And so welcome everyone to the Streamsy community call for 10th March. And let's start the first thing on the agenda, which is question and issues, open forum. Does anyone have anything they want to ask or raise, which is not on the agenda? Yes, I had a couple questions, if, if I can ask now. Yeah, sure. Um, so we just started using uh, uh, Strumzy. We, um, have, we got some space on a shared cluster, a shared Kubernetes cluster. We installed Strumzy and uh, Kafka, you know, came along with it. And we set up a connector. Um, so we use the Kafka Connect and the Kafka Connector, but we keep running into 500 errors, 400 errors, and um, with any of the connectors that we try. So we were wondering if there are any examples out there or um, if other people run into those frequently and how you get around those. And we were just trying the basic MySQL um, connection. Uh, I, I tried a Debezium, the JDBC, and um, the Camel. And it did different errors, but I wasn't able to get that going. The examples I've seen online don't seem to, people don't seem to run into issues. So I'm not sure what's different in our environment. I think it's quite hard to say what the issue might be without seeing the logs and the exact configurations. Yeah, we're using But I guess um, in, 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 in general, the issues, yeah, there's the usual, issue with not having enough resources for the connect cluster? I think we're okay on resources. You know, we've, you know, increased it quite a bit. We're using 024 of uh, Strimzy and Kafka 280. And um, if I use the camel one, we, get these uh, 400 errors. And if I try the SQL, the Debezium, I get 500 errors. Sometimes they, they paint and in the logs, I can see, you know, it's a pretty generic message about a connection failure. And I saw that there was a validate function you could use, but when I tried the validate function, it doesn't seem to return anything. Do you yeah, know so the, the validate function that I'm, the validate API? Yeah, it's, it, that depends where you get the errors, whether that relates directly to your connector configuration or doesn't relate to it so that's probably hard to say without seeing the actual logs i know the 500 so one situation where you might get the 500 errors is when you run multiple connect instances but they are configured to share the configuration which doesn't work properly there's a there's a chapter in the documentation and if you would have multiple connect instances I do have multiple connect clusters. Yeah, then that's that's worth uh, checking. I guess it's in the deploying guide. Okay, I'll take a look at that. I, you know, I was thinking about you know getting rid of one just in case, but um, I didn't think that would be a problem. Okay, so it, it's, it's not a problem to have multiple connect clusters, but uh, mm -hmm, trying to find the right part of the documentation. This is the 
this is the right section. So if you would have multiple connect instances, you need to configure the the connect uh, configure the internal topics for connect to have different names and the cluster to use different group ID. If you don't and do that, I, then that can cause some of the 500 errors. I think they're different, but I'll double check that. Um, yeah, the errors are just not very helpful. Yeah. Uh, have a look at this and if it doesn't help that it might be best to open a thread either on slack or on the github discussions and share there some more from the from the logs with what exactly the errors are okay and um those discussion groups are somewhere in this session so the if you go to the the Streams Kafka operator repository, there's just these discussions. Mm -hmm. And you can start a new thread there with new discussion and then people can reply and so on. Yeah. The other thing we were wondering is whether it had something to do with the Kafka operator because it's a shared cluster and we don't have visibility to the operator or the operator logs at this point. But yeah, I will do that thing. Yeah, that's that that's hard without seeing the operator logs. Yeah. But yeah, I, I guess if you share the logs which you which you have, maybe that helps, maybe that doesn't, we have to see. Okay, thank you. Um one other thing I we played with the K SQL connector. And once you turn on the cluster, we had authorization turned on and then we couldn't get it connected at all. Um, and I was wondering if there's any additional information on physical setup. I'm not sure we have, I'm not sure there's anyone else, but I have no idea about KSQL, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, and the other thing is when we, with the authorization turned off, the KSQL itself seems to be, you know, hit or miss in terms of creating streams or anything like that. So when, if the issue isn't the authorization, then usually the broker logs, they have fairly good this an exact description of what ACL rights are missing. So that's something what you can what you can check what needs to be added if there are any problems. Okay, great. All right, so we'll try the the discussion group or Slack. Thank you so much. Okay. Any other things from anyone for the questions and issues part? Okay, if not, let's move to the open PRs and issues. If anyone has some to discuss. No, then let's skip that part. Uh, anyone wants to talk about any proposals? Okay, then I guess the next point on the agenda is the incubation. Over to Paolo and Tom, I guess. Yeah, so uh, we've been working on this um, somewhat sporadically. Um, I think we're still moving forward. We did a bit of work on it um, in the last few days. There's still a few open questions about that. 
um, I don't think we've got anything that we can share today. Um, or uh, Paolo, do you think there's any questions we need to ask here at the moment, or should we just um, get try and get that done for next time? Um, well, just one question that um, um, I, I raised uh, on, on your feedback was about the, the security part, right? Where um, we already have today the um, security policy explained and you, of course, said uh, we should do, uh, so we should specify what are the versions that we are going to support in terms of fixing security vulnerabilities. Um, I saw that uh, other projects are uh, specifying the specific version, supported and non-supported, while uh, I would like to more or less ask if uh, it would be better, as I guess it's a Jaeger project, just to specify that, uh, yeah, we are going to fix uh, security vulnerability for uh, patches or I don't know, the latest minor release or the next minor release, but not specifying the whole list that we need every time to update when new version and are coming and other one are dropped and things like that. So I would like to know if uh, what the other things about that, if just a statement about we fix security issues on the on, on no patch release on the latest minor or in the next minor. Instead of having the entire list, yes, we fix 020, I don't know, 6.x, 027.x, uh, and then dropping one by one all the versions when we are going to have new releases. Because it's something that some projects are doing, so listing the versions, while Jaeger, for example, just say, we fix security vulnerabilities for patch versions or the next minor version, which is simpler to, to handle for future releases. That was my main doubt on how we should fix this. For the other, yeah, I think that uh, we can share something uh, later because uh, you you left some feedback. Uh, I uh, replied with some other answers and uh, yeah, maybe we should uh, reach a better shape. I guess general policy makes more sense or then changing it every time. It yeah. should also make it more clear what do we actually patch because nobody will be confused that month ago when they looked at it, it says that version 28 will be patched, but now it says that version 29 will be fixed and they are confused. So I I will say that our policy is always to patch security vulnerabilities in the latest minor release, right? So providing a patch release on the latest minor or in the next minor, in the new one coming, but not in the previous ones. So yeah, if, for example, the latest is at 0.28, we are going to patch uh, security vulnerabilities on 028.x or in the coming 029, but not in the previous 027, 026, and things like that. Yeah, I mean, if it's serious enough, then we would fix it in the last minor. If it's not serious enough, then we will do it in the next minor, right? I'm not sure how much we want to go into the detail. How do we decide what's serious and what's not serious? No, no, I, I guess that we should be kind of more general here. So saying that uh, de depending on the vulnerabilities, we fix them, uh, I don't know, in the in the current minor with the patch release or in the next minor. I'm also but not sure how much we want to say that we take over the Kafka security issues as they are. Because in reality, that's the most common question we get about security. 
right? With log for J1 basically. So in this case, we are relying on the Kafka release process. Yeah. Yeah, and then it becomes very difficult for people to be able to know when anything will be released because you know, you've got two release processes and they're not the most predictable things. Yeah, but that's how, it, that's how it works, things, right? So. I think we can try and put some words together to this effect, can't we? Okay, anything else? Okay, then I guess this stays as a topic for the next call as well. Then the next point on the agenda is the is the survey. How is this view useful? So I guess there's a, there are some questions which we have there. Do we want to go through the different ones and through the comments from me and Tom and decide on them. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. At least we will move on with it. Okay. So I guess the, the first question is how did you find out about Strimzy? And I guess the question is, what are we going to do with this information? How it will be useful for us? Yeah, I, I agree with you and Tom that it's not, uh, that doesn't provide much information to us. Some Some useful information, I mean. Yeah, if it's not actionable, I think we should get rid of it because the the sort of the shorter and less time it takes for people to fill in, then the more likely we're going to get a decent number of respondents. I would agree, even if uh, you can get information about where you have to improve to share the streams in knowledge. For example, I don't know if you are not on the top of the search engine, we need to improve our SEO on the website, uh, or uh, I don't know, we need to improve uh, the, 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 the social network uh, for uh, spreading the, yeah, the word around StreamZ. Yeah, no, not, so it's not so useful as other questions that we have for sure in this survey, but maybe you can try to understand where you need to improve to share the streams in knowledge. 
but yeah, it, so it, it's not so important in the end. I, I don't think it tells you where you need to improve, right? Why? Because just because people don't find streams through search engines doesn't necessarily mean you need to improve through search engines or your, your Google positions. It could also mean that people are not looking for Kafka operator through search engines, but through other means, right? So that's true. It's a possibility, but could be even the other way around that they are searching for something and you are not showing up as the first result. So it can be both true. Yeah, but that's the problem. You don't know which one is true from mm. this question. Okay, as I said, it's not so important, so we can get rid of it. Okay, so next one is where are you using Streamzy? And I guess, so Tom argued here as well that uh, that it's not really actionable either. I'm not sure it's completely actionable, but I think it's quite important to know how the people are using Streamzy, whether it's just to do local development with Minikube and Streamzy instead of running Kafka yourself or, and then use Amazon MSK somewhere in production or whether people are actually planning to go with it for production. I guess we want to see people use streams in production. So this really validates the use case, right? If everyone would say that they are using streams just as a local, just for local development, then yeah, it says probably something about the project having the wrong direction and wrong focus, right? Or not being successful. Okay, I think we should probably tighten up the language then, because at the moment we're asking the individual and individuals, you know, how do they answer? Are you are you running it in production? I think really we're asking here about is your organization running it in production? So, so how would it be in English? Where is your organization running Streamzy? Maybe it's um, Maybe just it's something to say is Streamzy being, are you going to use it in production? Are there plans to use Streamzy in the production environment, something like that? Um, tell you what, just tag me there and I'll reword it after the call because I think it. I think it's quite tricky to get right. Okay. 
so I guess the next question is what Kubernetes version do you run streams on? I guess that seems pretty clear. Yeah, I think that'd be yeah. useful to know. Yeah, it's useful. Then uh, the next one is how do you install Streamzy? And I guess the question here is again about the actionability and what we'll do with this information actually. Yeah, I mean, we had the same question last time, basically, and we got some answers and then it's not changed what we've done at all. We still package it in exactly the same way. We didn't put any more effort into Helm packaging, even though that's what the majority of respondents last time said that they were using. So if we're not going to make use of the information in that way, then what use is this question? And do we want to invest more time, for example, for into Helm, or we just basically will keep it as it is? Well, there's, you know, sort of improving the Helm packaging is one thing, and we could certainly do that. But that, you know, there's also the ongoing testing of that as well. So, you know, I think it is a bit of a commitment to do that. And if, if that's sort of if we think that's sufficiently important, you know, if we thought that was slowing adoption of Strimzy, then we might think that that's high enough priority to actually do that work. But how do we know that that you know sort of poor Helm support was, you know, it, preventing people from using Strimzy? I don't think we could figure that out from this survey, and I don't think I can't think of a, a way that we'd figure it out otherwise, really. Yeah, I guess answer it yourself, Jakub. So if this question says that everyone's using Helm, does it mean that you will learn more about Helm and start improving it? Or, I mean, nobody from us, yeah. I guess, in the core team is actually using Helm for one reason or another. And speaking for myself, I, not sure I plan to use it because others are using it. So yeah, will you focus just on improving the Helm because people are using it according to the question or? Yeah, that makes sense. So we are going to remove this question. I think so, yeah. Okay. Okay. The next one. What's stopping you from contributing to Streamsy? And I had a long comment here. I think it would be useful to understand more about why people are or aren't contributing eventually, what would help them to contribute more. That said, I think this question is a bit, I don't like how the question is, is framed because it basically assumes that everyone wants to contribute but something is stopping them, right? And it doesn't really, I don't think it captures the issue, right? So first you probably wanna know why 
would or wouldn't people consider contributing? Or how many wouldn't consider contributing, for example, because they don't need anything and everything works fine for them? And then based on that, for those who would actually consider it, you would be interested in what can be improved or what the blockers are, right? Yeah, how about we reword it to how could we make contributing to Strimzy easier or something like that? Because that's all we're going to you know, do with this if we get a load of people basically saying, you know, it's a nightmare to build from source, then, you know, we might be prepared to look at the build process. Or if we've got a load of people saying something else, I don't know, then we might be prepared to do something about that. So should it be something like, if you ever consider contributing to Kubernetes, what were the biggest obstacles or something like that? Yeah, I mean, that would work as well. Like this? Yeah. Do we want to also somehow capture why would or wouldn't people be interested in contributing? What, I guess... what difference would that make? They're either a potential contributor, in which case we want to help them make that contribution, whatever it is, or they're not, in which case, you know, it's great that they're a user and that's fine. We don't expect anything more, but, you know, there's nothing more that we can really do for them from the contribution point of view. Okay, I guess that's true, yeah. Okay. So the next one is, do you use custom Kafka Connect images? How do you build them? So there are no comments to this, so I guess it might be fine to everyone. I mean, I think the answer would, you know, we're interested in the answer because we put, you know, work into the connect build feature. And I, I suspect we sort of, that's how we would like people to use Kafka Connect, having sort of put that work in and made that really sort of simple to use. But what we're going to get out of this is just, a, you know, some percentages, really. And what are we going to do with that? So I'm, 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 for this one, I am happy to keep it because I, I would kind of like to know, but I still don't know what I'd do with that once I have that knowledge. So it's a new feature which wasn't there last time we did the survey, right? And it's probably one of the more, one of the bigger features we have lately. So I think it makes sense to validate if people are using it or if it was complete waste of effort. 
there are also things which we which we talked about in the past like having the the container catalog and so on which we didn't really got to and i'm not sure we will get to but like for those for example it would make sense to understand how people are or aren't using this feature to know how the catalog should look like right if if after more than a year since we have this feature we find out that nobody's using it then yeah it's probably based of effort to build a connector catalog which would make it easy to use this feature to build the connectors because yeah maybe for whatever reason people want to use docker files in their pipelines okay but then this question doesn't really get to why they might not be using the new feature it just gives you a point in time snapshot of how many are whereas some of them it might be i didn't know about it and some of them it might be i've chosen not to use it or my organization says we have to use our own pipeline because of you know sort of software you know supply chain attacks or whatever it is yeah that's i guess that's fair point to some extent right if people don't know what it is then yeah, that would be good to know because we probably failed at advertising in the new feature. But then if people don't use it because it doesn't match their requirements for, for pipelines and so on, then uh, yeah, that at the end, <laughs> yeah, at the end, that means that they are not using the new feature because they can't for whatever reason right so so yeah i was wondering if we sort of phrase the question in a slightly more opinionated way um whether we could sort of get that information so um something along the lines of um something along the lines of you know are you not are you um if you're not using the kafka connect build feature why not and then obviously you've got the sort of the options of i don't need to use kafka connect or i didn't know about it or um you know i've tried and it didn't work for me or you know we already had invested in our own build pipeline or we're not allowed to for you know organization policy reasons i think that will shed a lot more light on on why people are or aren't using this feature that we think is the best way of you know using kafka connect with strimsy right okay do you want to rewrite it now and here or no, you can tag me and I'll. Like this, will you remember what we meant? Yeah, I'll remember. I guess you can watch well. the recording if you need. Thanks, Jacob. Before moving to, to question number seven, because we are talking about new feature 
I was wondering, I don't have the right question right now or if uh, it will be useful or not, but maybe I was wondering if uh, having a question around how useful could be for your organization, for you, the canary, the new canary component, if it's something that, uh, I don't know, they have on their own, if uh, the canary component is something that is useful for checking their Kafka cluster is working okay, or if they don't know actually about the canary, it will be even a way for, if people don't know about the canary, it will be a way for making people aware that there is this new component in the StreamZ ecosystem. I was wondering if a question on the canary, I don't have the right question right now, but would be, would make sense to have like we were asking something about this new Kafka Connect build feature. I guess you should think about it and come up with a question. Okay. Yeah, if you think that it's, that's, uh, yeah, that that makes sense, I will come with with a good question. I think it's hard to say without knowing the question, at least for me, but I think in general, yeah, if you have something we can ask about the canary, then yeah, let's propose it and let's discuss it. Okay. Okay, next one is what do you miss in Strimzy as a as a free text? Yeah, I think these are always worth having and I agree sticking them at the end makes okay. most sense. Let's move it later so that it doesn't don't waste time on it now. Anyone else having anything to the seven and eight? Okay, then uh, nine is what helps you most with solving your issues with all kind of options related basically to docs, blog posts, videos and so on. There are no comments on this one. So does that mean that everyone wants to keep it and is fine with it? Yeah, I think this could be useful because obviously we put a lot of effort into all of these things in one way or another. Um, and knowing which are sort of the most used. I do wonder whether we're, at the moment we're asking which one is the most helpful. Whereas I do sort of think maybe if people could sort of rank them somehow, um, we might see a little bit sort of more clearly um, the pathway that people take, where they start off and then where they go to next which might help us focus our efforts on, you know, sort of how we guide people through, through that. I yeah, I agree. We, we should make sure that uh, CNCF, uh, with CNCF is possible to, to make some ranking questions where, you know, for each line you can specify a kind of uh, priority from one to seven, eight. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard thing to do, isn't it? I, I think they use, was it SurveyMonkey that they used last time? Yeah. It must be a, yeah. Yeah. a widget that's available there. So I edit as a comment so that we find out 
later when setting up the survey. Yeah. Hmm. And I guess we can update the question as, as well. Yeah. So should it then be something like, how helpful are these? things for you when solving issues or? What do you turn to first when solving issues? And then get them to rank? Or rank the so sources third, according to usefulness when solving issues that doesn't that doesn't get you to the order in which i mean i suppose it kind of does yeah let's say that it's kind of easier yeah i just forgot what i suggested <laughs> rank the how, how do we call it information sources how useful you find the 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 following when solving your issues words are hard aren't they like this yeah looks good to me Okay. Then uh, the next question is, do you read streams of blog posts? If so, are those posts useful to you? And pretty much I had the question here, what would we do with it? Would we stop writing blog posts just because majority of people says that they don't read them. I guess Tom suggested that it might be more useful if we can, for example, get some categories or some topics which people might be interested in on the blog. But that would actually assume that we come up with some, some categories. We right now don't have any categories on the blog itself. I can certainly come up with a list of categories. I don't think that would be that difficult. I think you've got things like, you know, I'm interested in sort of general Kafka stuff that I can, might need to do, you know, when using Strimzy, sort of operational type stuff, for example. Um, you've got, you know, how to use Strimzy effectively. Um, you've got blogs about sort of new upcoming features. We, we, you know, we just want to know sort of what, you know, most people find most interesting, don't we? So that we can focus our attention on that sort of content rather than spending, you know, because it, it, it's quite a lot of effort for someone to write and then get reviewed a, a blog post. So I guess it should be more as a ranking again. Yes. Does that seem fine to everyone? Yes. Is it okay if I edit as an action item for you, Tom? Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, Jakub, you were saying something? Just that uh, I agree with it.
Okay. Then the next question is, uh, how often do you upgrade your Streamsy cluster? And I guess in the discussion here, Tom wonders, about how many people would prefer to use patch releases of Kafka and how many want the latest versions. Uh, whereas I think that this information on its own is fairly useful because yeah, it helps us to understand when and what makes people upgrade and that can help us to shape how the upgrade should look like, what should be the upgrade paths we should be testing more thoroughly and so on. The danger I see when I, so I think the information about the, the Kafka point releases and so on would be interesting as well. But I think the danger I see is that the people answering the survey in general, they don't have the, the effort which they, which things cost, right? So uh, I'm not entirely sure how would you phrase the question to get answer, which doesn't pretty much just say, yeah, I want you to support all Kafka versions since uh, the start of ages, because why wouldn't I want you to do that? Uh, yeah, I think might that, be that's useful a valid for me. point. You're just going to get a spread of people and no clear outcome as to a, a course of action. So let's keep this one and not bother with the point releases. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to know, but I don't know how to phrase the question to kind of don't get just yes, I want it answers. A radio button, at least, forces people to. <clears throat> no, it wouldn't, right? Or you mean radio yeah, yeah, button it... support patch releases versus support latest Kafka? Uh huh. Yeah. But but then the, the the problem is is once you've aggregated that you just get a distribution where it'll be something like fifty fifty and then what do you do with that so yeah so should I just resolve this I'm happy if you do yeah anyone anything else to this question okay then the other question is about feature gate. It's pretty much asking the people if they know about the feature gate uh, and if they know whether they give them a try or whether they simply wait until they are enabled by default and so on. Uh, do people see that as a useful question? I think I do, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the last question is about the hardware platforms people are interested in. Uh, yeah, I guess the question is, what do we get? out of it, right? IBM is contributing the S390X and PPC64 support probably anyway. We have the first two on our own. Yeah, 
yeah to be honest i'm not sure if people come with i don't know mips or uh, other architectures if we have commitment for then supporting these new architectures or yeah i don't even know if there's some way how to properly test mips and so on yeah yeah seems simplest to take this out yeah yes i agree Okay. So <clears throat> I guess that's it for the survey. We just have to update it. So yeah, I will try and uh, get onto that this week, and then once we've once I've done that, I'll just send it to CNCF. I don't think we need to have another round of discussion about it. I think we've covered it thoroughly enough here. Yeah, I guess you should give Paolo some time to, if he wants to come up with this kind of question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But we can just comment on the doc and not uh, waiting for the next community call. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Works for me. Okay. Uh, we didn't really have any time left for the last point. The interesting point is, do we want to talk about this next time or do we actually want to wait for the results of the survey about the Kubernetes versions? Leave it on the agenda for now, because we don't know how okay. long it might take CNCF to do the survey. And then I think last time we had the survey open for, a, was it like four weeks or a month or something? Yeah, something um, like that. So it could be that the answers to that might be a couple of months out and we might want to take a decision before then. Though it would be weird if we were asking about people using 116. Yeah, that already made makes, a decision to drop support, but that makes sense. Okay. Then I guess that's it for today. Thanks, folks. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thanks See for you. coming, Thanks. everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.